all these different streams. We're on. Hi, everybody. I am Seth Dudetsky. I'm James Wesley. It's always feels like a miracle when we press go broadcast and it actually yeah. works. We don't really know anything about technology. I can't believe anything is working right now. Okay, so we're doing these concerts twice a day for the Actors Fund. And we always want to reiterate this. The Actors Fund is for everyone. Actors, singers, dancers, makeup artists, hairstyles, key grips. I don't know what that means. Best boys, <laughs> literally ushers, box office, anybody. And everyone is basically out of work. And the big Actors Fund fundraisers have basically all been canceled. So yeah. they not only need more money, they're not even making the normal money they normally do make. So I'm going to add this banner right now telling you to please... Um, Donate to the Actors Fund as we're chatting. And while Seth's doing that, here, here are some people, because we they were still donating after Mark's show um, was done. So I wanted to name a few names here, and thank you. Tanya from New Jersey gave $75. Julie from Kansas, $50. Josephine from New Jersey, $25. Danielle from New York, $25. Suzanne from New Jersey, $55. Barry from New York, $103. Cheryl from Ohio, $103. Mark from New York, $100. Priscilla, Priscilla from Michigan, 25, and Mark from New Rochelle. New Rochelle. Wow, wow, New Rochelle. That's amazing when everything that's going on there, $25. So we, uh, we yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Son. We love all the donations we got, and we're so happy, but there's one person who's a little bit depressed, and he's right here. Mark Shaman said that he would match any donation made. Hi, Mark. Hello. So now you have to match all the donations made at your show. How do you feel about that, girl? Well, that's why Lou and I are in the car because we're uh, about to break into a bank. <laughs> <laughs> because the amount that was raised during Mark's part, Mark's show this afternoon was nine thousand twenty-three dollars and seventy-four cents for Mark's show, and he and Lou, his husband, are matching it. Yay! Yay, Mark and Lou. Okay. How much? How much have you made, like, on average for each show? Um. I guess what I'm asking is, is was me saying I matched it? <laughs> let's just people. let's well, just gently wave goodbye. <laughs> and, <laughs> bye, Mark. <laughs> Gotta go, girl. But I will say I want to give a big shout out to my friend Amy Corn, who also right. made a giant donation. Right. Um, okay, so wait, we got to start the show. We got to well, hold on though. I want to talk a little bit <clears throat> okay. about the city because Mark and Lou are going into the city. Yeah. To before we're anticipating that that we won't be allowed to anymore. And they have a house upstate the way that Seth and I and our family does. And it was really uh, <laughs> pretty moving uh, going in and seeing literally, sorry, my phone is on, um, moving trucks. And we have a, we live in a small building and sorry, this is all- We live in a small building and two people were actually moving out of our building. And, yeah, and there out. may be 10 people or 10 apartments in the building. And around the corner, there were three moving trucks. But what was, disturbing was what, you know, Dr. John LaPook, who you'll see in a minute, it keeps talking about and everyone should be doing in that social distancing. It was really disturbing. Seth went in, I, Seth doesn't drive and I was in the car and had the flashers on and Seth was going upstairs and he came back after a little while, he brought some bags down because there were a lot of clothes we didn't, we didn't have here and a few other things. And he came back and he was really, disturbed and and i said did you get this did you get that and he said no and i said well i'll go in well i found out why he was so disturbed the movers were going up and down we live on the fourth floor people were moving on the fifth and they were not they were I, when i asked them can do you mind please stepping back six feet they didn't understand they were like oh well we'll go right by you like that close and i had to go back upstairs and then i was care it was really a stressful <coughs> situation but all of that said, <clears throat> there was a lighthearted, and I say lighthearted. So we came from the city to the house on Friday. I still, because we've been busy doing this, I still don't know where my car keys are. So I've been using my mom's car keys, thank goodness. But my mom doesn't have our apartment car keys on it. And as we're driving up to the apartment- We drove for an hour to the apartment. Seth says- Oh, by the way, I don't have keys to the apartment. So we had driven an hour. We knew this would be our last time driving into the city for a while, and neither one of us had our keys. But to the rescue, Seth said, "So name droppy. Tina Fey has our keys. <laughs> but literally, Tina Fey lives right near us. She has our keys. I went to her building, no joke. Elevator door open. She bent down, threw the keys on the floor. So they skidded. We literally did it six feet." Skid it, and we literally had a conversation where she was six feet away. We were so social distancing. Yes, hold on. Let's. We got to bring in. 
Are, are you proud of us, I'll Dr. Do it. Hold I, on. Am, I am I don't know where I am. Hello. I don't know why you're black. Hold on. That's really weird. That's never happened before. Hold on. This has literally never happened before. Dr. John LaPoog, I'm bringing you in. I don't know. I was there. I saw myself. And I see you too. Let me just see. That's really weird. So hold on. Maybe I'm going to re-invite you. You know, we I, I changed something tonight and I added extra streams. Maybe that destroyed this whole... Well, I can see you. Okay, so I'm going to remove you. Maybe... Let me see if this works. Hold on. I'm going to remove you. I'm going to bring in one of our other special guest stars. Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann, you look great. Thank you. Now, why are you in full light? Okay, I'm removing you for a second. Bye, Terry. I'm going to bring in the doctor one more time. Okay, Dr. LaPook, I'm going to re-invite you, and we're going to see okay. what happens, okay? Yeah, we'll so make that work. Go check your email. Um, James, what else do we have to give information to the public before we start this? That's it for right now. Actorsfund.org. Um, you can, as those of you who have joined us before know, you can send in questions. And um, while Seth's getting that together, we literally can't see the screen right now. Um, that's how pop and pop, mom and pop we are. Seth is resending the invite to Dr. LaPook. Um, because he does have some important stuff to tell us. Well, at least we're on right now. Thank goodness. Yeah, so uh, we're on right now and it's being watched everywhere. We'll see Dr. And by the way, we can see comments on the side. Let me just see. Oh my god, we have so many comments oh, wow. already. Yeah. Jenna Moswich just oh, said like someone said more, more about that. <laughs> wait. You you made me choke on my coffee, Tina Bailey Rescue. It's true. It was so name droppy. Someone said is the doctor screen muted. No, you can't mute it. I don't know how to mute a screen. Let him. Uh, All right. So look, he's going to be. Oh, he came back at this. What the heck? I don't know what is going on. Okay. Well, regardless, you know, we're going to start the show and I'll get it back somehow. We've got to bring in our, our major special guest star, the brilliant singer songstress. Who's been with us. She'll tell us how many Concert for America concerts. I don't even know. I've I lost can't track. Even count. Five, Listen, six, Manchester, seven, I don't know. Come to the rescue. Yay, Yay! Manchester. Welcome to my living room. I love it. Yeah, by the way, you know, we like to get a little bit. Can you give us a little taste of what's behind you in your living room? Uh, I have, well, first of all, I have Christmas lights up everywhere. Just always? Or you've been lazy? <laughs> now she, wait, now she, hold on. Hold on, hold on. What is happening here? Wait, unmute. You can't, wait. You can't unmute. Okay, hold on. Melissa, your mic. Oh, her, her mic is off. We've Melissa, never had this many technical problems, <laughs> literally it ever. It's bound before to happen. Tell tell Melissa where the mic. You're, you gotta somehow you muted your mic somehow. So hold on. It says their mic is not connected. Did anything when you moved your your? Uh, I see Sue Holder in the background. Anything? And uh, there's a mute button on the bottom left. No, it's, it says, un, yeah, unmute. Did you mute yourself? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, right next to your name, there's a mute button. When she moved, that's what's, someone is saying, when you moved, did you unmute it? Anybody? I'm gonna, I'm gonna play your theme song. Do I have to literally invite you again as well? It's still fine in real time goodness. Thank you, Hope. Hold on, once again, unmute Mike. Can't unmute your guest. Their mic See, isn't not, connected. That's what it says. We're not at CBS. This is what happens. So you know what? It's Fix us. that. I'm going for my big Broadway style for a second. Terrence Mann. <laughs> Hi, dear. You're literally supposed to just be here to be observing Melissa Manchester because you're a super fan, but now you are the main guest. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Don't do that. Okay. Please. So literally, well, hold on. She thinks. Oh, hold on. Is this you can hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hi, Terry. So first thing, uh, Terrence Mann, you really, you really are a super fan of Melissa Manchester. Can you just, uh, by the way, if you don't know Terry Mann, literally the original. Everything. Yes. Well, just in case, you know, the original Grisabella in Cats. Um, <laughs> the original Beast. <laughs> Terry Mann, so what is your connection to Melissa Manchester? Why the obsession? We love her. Why do you love her? Well, there was Carol King in 1968, 69, and then then my life changed when I heard Melissa Manchester Aww. because that was the biggest, I mean, the, the voice, the writing, the songs, the, the, it, it, it and, and all through the seventies, every album, every song, um, made my life and my sense of being an actor or being a performer, you know, just so incredibly rich because I'd never heard anything like her. Uh -uh. Thank She's you. She's still, I mean, you know what? And I, and I got to say this, you know, 
uh, to a degree, an, un, an unsung uh, power diva, singer, songwriter of the first degree. And I, I, I was just listening today because I knew I was going to do this. <laughs> and I was listening to Just You and I. And mm -hmm. my wife and I were sitting here singing it. <laughs> and then I did a little bit. I mean, so my, my, my relationship to her was, was sort of my own because I would go to sleep listening to her sing songs every Thanks. night during when I was when I was I had no money. I was a struggling actor and I would go. This gives me joy. It makes me feel good. I it created a happiness in my life knowing I could be a performer. But so the, the big deal was. I was working on a project. I was working on a Broadway show called Barnum with Joe Lake. Oh, and, yes. about this and um um, I, I, my birthday was coming up and I had talked to Joe about how much I had loved you and he was doing your your concert I think your Vegas concert or he was putting mm -hmm. together your show mm -hmm. um, for and, and and we would talk about it he said oh that's great I said you don't know I you have no idea how much I love her I mean how much she's meant to me as a performer what she's done to me musically and so my birthday was coming up and three months later my birthday was happening I go to his apartment for a birthday party. <laughs> We're sitting around. The doorbell rings. Um, Joe says, go answer that. I go and answer it, and it's Melissa Manchester. She goes, <laughs> are you Terry? Happy birthday. Did you was your birthday present? Yes. I was. Okay, so Terry, you're going to get really... A Melissa Manchester concert. I'm going to see if this John LaPook works. So I'm going to remove you for just a moment. Remove from screen. Remove from screen. Dr. John LaPook, please work. Yay! Yay! Oh, that's the jazz hands way of saying hello instead of shaking your hands. <laughs> ah! So, so Dr. LaPook, we were talking about the social right. distancing and we were begging for your approval that yeah. we did the right thing by asking. Yeah. So I'm going to try to, you know, I like to say you're the spoonful of sugar that's helping my, the medicine go down that I'm bringing. So it's a combination of entertainment and and medical advice. And today there was a there was a press conference at the White House and Dr. Deborah Birx, B-I-R-X, um, got up there and said, look, contrary to popular belief out there, millennials can actually from Europe, they're doing data from Europe, millennials can actually get ill. Um, Children are still relatively protected, but millennials can get ill, um, quite sick, uh, but they also are bringing the infection either with mild symptoms or even no symptoms to others. You know, you're seeing still them cavalier, not everybody, but a lot of millennials, you see them in groupings, they're still on the beach, they're at spring break and all that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, think about it this way, in World War II, your grandparents are, you know, were fighting to give us the life that we're able to enjoy today. And all we're asking the millennials and everybody else is to just do nothing. I mean, my father died last almost two years ago at almost 100, a few months shy of 100. Um, Poppy, we called him, Dr. Sidney LaPook. He was a medic in uh, Patton's Third Army, 193rd Division. And he was in the Battle of the Bulge and he had all sorts of you know, things that he went through and actually retraced his steps through Normandy. I mean, it was unbelievable what, what that generation, that greatest generation went through. All we're asking in order to help keep them safe, that greatest generation and their kids is do nothing, stay home. I mean, for a limited I, amount of time. For a limited amount of time. We don't know exactly how long, but this whole thing, it's going to have a beginning, a middle and an end. It's going to be a bumpy ride. As my friend, Dr. Larry Brilliant said, this is not the zombie apocalypse. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. It's not gonna be an extinction event. It's not to downplay it, it's a big deal. But we have a very limited amount of time right now. I mean, literally in the next weeks to month, that kind of thing, where if we act right this second, we could, we could blunt that curve. Remember, we wanna flatten that curve so we don't get the big spike in cases that can overwhelm the system. If we can just blunt that curve so we don't get the spike all at once, we can make a huge difference, but it's got to be now. And as Dr. Anthony Fauci said, Tony Fauci, who is the head of infectious diseases for the National Institute of Health, if you think you're doing too much, you're probably either, either doing enough or not enough. So th mm -hmm. there's no reason to say, well, there are, there's a pocket here and a pocket here. No, let's assume it's everywhere, everywhere, everybody, everywhere, socially, do the social distancing in the car. And then, you know, if it's too, if it was overkill, it was overkill. But again, the last point I want to make medically is the vulnerable. 
people who are elderly, what's elderly, you know, we in Italy, when it, when it hit 70, the mortality really went up, but 65, 60, it's hard to say exactly what elderly is, but they should certainly self-isolate. And the people with medical conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, compromised or weakened immune systems. So this is a time to be serious, but remember 80% of the cases are relatively mild um, and we have to save the resources for the people who are sick and we all can get through this together. Okay, I wanna to talk to you about how to talk to children, but I'm gonna bring you back. I wanna have a little bit of music, so I'm gonna remove from screen as we say, I'm gonna bring in Melissa Manchester in her living room. Melissa, I know you've got fans, we're psycho fans. What is the first song you're gonna be giving yeah. to us? I think the first song I'm going to do um, um, is A Better Rainbow. Yay! Yes. I think uh, it, you know, I'll sing songs that speak to this moment, if that's okay. May I start? Well, just give me five seconds. How did you write it? What made you write this beautiful song? You know, I, I wrote this um, on the morning of President Obama's second election, second inauguration. I saw a photograph of the White House and it was in such, such palpable golden light that it just struck me and the song sort of sort of unfolded and spilled out of me. And um, I have used it to, there's a video on, on my webpage for voting, um, for pe to encourage people to vote. Um, yeah. I just think it's a, it's a song for all seasons, but certainly is a song for a season now. For hope, hit it please. Okay. golden light lifts up my eyes to see your wonder gone the night is gone the storm that broke the sky with thunder to free that better rainbow to see a better rainbow I know there's a better rainbow over all. Hope, wake up and see our secret dreams have wings for flying. Hope, look overhead. Look how she bends to hold us closer To see that better rainbow Believe a better rainbow I know there's a better rainbow Every drop of color Is a tear already crying Maybe it's that ancient sign that all's forgiven. Maybe it's time we find a better way to live. To see that better rainbow. Believe a better rainbow. I know there's a better rainbow. Let's go to that better rainbow. I know there's a better rainbow over all. Yay! Before I forget, by the way, a uh, YouTube comment, your daughter is watching. Yes! Yay! <laughs> so, hey! <laughs> okay, so... Oh, it's like, here we... I just want to show so, some of these here. They're just so sweet. Crying in Canada. Yeah. Here we go. That voice never fails to make my heart flutter. This is what <laughs> real talent is all about. I agree with it. Oh, Sarah claims... I think Sarah's lying. She says, I'm not crying. You are. <laughs> we all are. And by the way, one more. I remember being obsessed with you. Should hear how she talks about you in the 80s. Wearing out my cassette, dating yourself of Ice Castles. Yes. We cried in the theme song. What a voice. Thank you, Melissa. My okay, pleasure. so just, Melissa, I just love a little background because you're from New York. Yes. Um, what did you want to be when you grew up? A singer-songwriter? When I grew up, I wanted my life to be special. That's all I knew. 
Mm -hmm. I wanted my life to sparkle. I wanted to be discovered by Richard Rogers or, or Paul McCartney. But I must say, I do have my theater stories. I yeah. have my theater connections. Let's hear and it, girl. I, have rituals. I do. This was me when I starred in Song and Dance. Oh, yes. I took over for Bernadette Peters, the national tour. This, that's exactly right. This is me with Maestro Sondheim when I starred in as Beggar Woman in the 25th per, uh, anniversary of Sweeney Todd. I sang, <laughs> yes, I sang songs that had been truncated and- Wow, this, that's amazing. I know. And this is me from the original dance and I, had, uh, Carol Sager and I had two songs in this. Oh wait, I literally thought that was your pose. I'm like, that's a weird- No, pose. no, 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 that's Benny Ryan King. But yeah, but yeah, and I have a fantastic, I have two fantastic stories. Do I have time? Yes, yes, we have all the time in the world. All right, this is my Marvin Hamlish story because Marvin meant so much to me, Marvin and, and Carol Sager. How did you know Marvin and Carol? Just give me that for a second. How did you meet them? Okay, well, Carol Sager and I were songwriter partners, songwriting partners for five years. And through her, I met um, Marvin. And Marvin and Carol wrote Through the Eyes of Love, you know, yes. and, and presented to me as a gift. And my gift to them was my my performance. And uh, we were all nominated for an Academy Award and it was magnificent. But anyway, years later, uh, Marvin and I were not performing together, but we happened to be in Florida at the same time. So we met for lunch and lunch was almost over. And I turned to him and I asked him the following. So what was opening night of Chorus Line actually like? And he said, well, you know, they kicked and they all went back into that cinematic finale and the place erupted and we all went on stage and they took the curtain call and then it was the third curtain call and we all remembered who we, we had forgotten during the first and the second. And then it was the 10th uh, curtain call. And by the 21st curtain call, we had lost the power of language. I said, and what does 20, he said, because nobody, the audience would just not leave. I said, and what does 21 curtain calls feel like? He said, it feels like the best thousand years of your life. Hey, I can't even imagine what a thrill that was for him. But by the way, you played for stadium, so you felt the same thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so but can you imagine, can you imagine? I know. I know. I know. And then, so, so if I have time to tell one more story, this is my yes, Stephen Sondheim. This is what I want to hear. Best story of all. So it was opening night of Sweeney Todd that I was in. This was the 25th anniversary. It was it was a wonderful cast. Kelsey Grammer was playing Sweeney. Christine Baranski was Mrs. Lovett. It was just it, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and um, so, so Mr. Sondheim, of course, came out for it. Uh, and we had, it was for the, it was for the encore presentation so it was only six performances but it could have run forever because it's a masterpiece anyway so so we went to the so i went to the party and uh and i was introduced to him and he didn't see my brain exploding but nonetheless um so it was lovely but we had a matinee to do the next day so <clears throat> i don't know if you know who lindsay law is lindsay law was head of programming for pbs okay. so uh so i go up to Mr. Sondheim just to say good night to him. I, and I see that he's in conversation with a gentleman and I just tap him on the shoulder and I say, it's been such an honor and I'm so thrilled to be part of this. And thank you, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I do have a matinee, so I'm going to go home now. Thank you so much. He turns to me and he says, Melissa, this is Lindsay Laws. He can get us work. <laughs> Everybody underneath everything is a starving <laughs> artist. That's right. <laughs> that is hilarious. You know, it's so dear. You know, we do have, you know, we get questions throughout this. We usually do them at the end, but there's someone that just popped up a question here. I'm going to read it. Not sure if you're taking questions while well, we are right now, because that's what we're doing. But I love Melissa's episode of The Muppet Show. Any fun memories from that? I never worked so hard in my life. I was in London uh, taping that, working with the most magnificent Jim Henson and Frank Oz and all of those, Jerry Nelson. I'd never seen people work so hard to get the, the shots wow. set up. So I never saw London because we were working 12 hour <laughs> days, but it was 
spectacular. There was one uh, there was one scene where I'm waiting at the stage door to be allowed into the theater and there's some kind of an explosion. And of course I said, oh shit. And I said, okay, I guess you can't use that. So, uh, but anyway, it was great. It was great. Everybody was fantastic. And it was, it was just fantastic to see how everybody worked. And of course, Jillian Lynn choreographed my pieces. Wow. And, uh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I would love to um, hear a song. Maybe you know, I know your fans are going to ask for songs. Maybe we'll ask your super fan, Terrence Mann. Do you ever request for a song from Ms. Manchester? <laughs> oh my God! I know. <laughs> I, I'm. I don't know. I. Um, I don't know if you do easy or if you do. Um, you know, I don't know why you're here. You love me. I would say this at all. I can only do a little bit of it. <laughs> Thank you for asking. If you want me, you can have me. Lord of mercy. And if you need me, I'll be there. I'm not playing hard to get. Oh, no. I haven't turned you down yet. Oh, oh. If you're ready, I'm set to go anywhere, anywhere. I just want you to want me. Come on, come on, come on, come on and love me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Cause babe, can't you see? Nothing harder than to live without love. That's why they call me easy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made somebody's <laughs> night. <laughs> you. That's awesome. Uh, Terry, we're bringing you back. I'm bringing back Dr. LaPook. So, Dr. LaPook, let's yeah. get serious for a second. First of all, Melissa Manchester, any medical questions right. for our chief medical correspondent of CBS and Stars in the House? Yes, doctor, I would like to know, once these ventilators are made more accessible, once the once the inoculations or the testing is made more accessible, what is the lag time between getting these instruments of health and to the people who need them? And so um, <clears throat> just medical terminology first. So ventilators are the things that, you know, a breathing tube, big machine in the hospital. Respirators are, are different. They're sort of, you know, masks. And then the, the N95 masks. Right. Um, and then there's the testing issue. Um, so which one of those are you are you asking about? I'm asking for, well, let's say this, the testing. Okay, because that's a great question. So yeah. today, Dr. Burks told us something and it's so, you know what, you know what the antidote to fear is? Facts. And we, you know, we hate the uncertainty. Market hates the uncertainty. We, we all, I hate uncertainty. Um, and she told us something very important. She said, hey, look, don't be surprised. There's going to be a big rise in the number of cases in the next week. Why? And she told us very specifically, there's been a backlog of people who've had them done. They've had the nose and the mouth swabs. They're sitting there in the lab yeah. and yeah. they need to be processed. And it's a thing called throughput. And at first, it was very little ability to have them process. And now they're ramping up. So all these specimens that have been sitting there are going to now get processed. And you'll see the numbers go up like that. So people shouldn't freak out and say, right. oh, my God, suddenly these are cases. And this has been one of the problems, Melissa, from the very beginning, which mm -hmm. is what is going on right now? Where's the snapshot? How do I get my arms around what is going on? And I, I was saying it before. You know what? We should just assume it's everywhere. There's no downside to doing that. Everybody should do social isolation. Uh, but the reason why this is so important, what you're doing and what Seth and James are doing and others are doing is so important is even as we socially isolate, we have to stay emotionally connected. It's yeah. bad for your health to be yes. socially isolated. And yeah. actually, you know, think about one thing very specifically. If it means that you're anxious and you're not able to sleep, well, we need sleep in order to repair our immune systems. Yes. We need our immune systems in order to help fight the, the COVID-19. So mm -hmm. it's not just, oh, isn't it great? You know, we can put on a play. We can use my mother's barn. This is medically important. And this is why I'm taking an hour out from two to three and an hour out from eight to nine every day so far, as long as I can, because I think this is actually 
medically important. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, so you got some fans. We got to go back to music. By the way, Jane just said, Shh, you just made a fans night. Melissa Manchester, what are you going to do next for your fans? I have requests, but have you gotten requests? Tell us, go. <laughs> Whatever it is, it'll keep till the morning. Haven't we both got better things to do? Midnight blue. Even the simple things become rough haven't we had enough and i think we can make it one more time if we try if we try one more time for all the old times for all of the times you told me you need me, needing me now is something I could use. Midnight blue, wouldn't you give your hand to a friend? Maybe it's not the end. And I think we can make it one more time if we try, if we try one more time for all the old times. Midnight blue. Oh my God, it's so stunning. It's so, look. <laughs> <laughs> so great. Oh <laughs> my gosh. And just, this is so nice. I live alone. You guys are appointments, appointments for me. Daily uh, at eight o'clock. Thank you so much for my brain and heart. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Ma Melissa, you know that, uh, how much I love that song. And how many Concert for America did, how many of those concerts have you done for us? Six. Wow. Six. This Six. is all for all for social justice. Melissa went all, all over the country to do this. Yep. And uh, and you know, on my birthday, Melissa flew up to Seattle, and that remains probably my favorite birthday. <laughs> and, and, uh, but you know, it, you bring so much joy, and you know, when you did our last concert for American in September, I'll never forget that. Everyone, it makes me cry. Everyone was on the side. All the performers, no one went and sat down in the audience, 
we were all, I think I took a video, I'll have to send it to you. Yes, just dancing, incredible. going back and forth and yeah. the joy that you bring. Thank you oh. so much, really. You're so welcome. It's my joy. It's so my, it's my joy to be part of what I believe is marching on the right side of history. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what I think. And I'm so Finally. glad that you guys, you guys are beacon of light and, and a clear message of how to move forward. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Well, we've got some, uh, or the first round of One donations. Second. As ahead, reason, if you have any questions for Melissa, put them in the comments and we'll ask after. Is there any questions Put them a Melissa? little bit later because it's hard to find them. There's so many scrolling up. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, I'll look. Okay. So the first donations for uh, the, our show number five with Melissa, we have Mateo from Michigan, $51. Marcy, also from Michigan, $100. William, 25 from California. Margaret, 51 from Massachusetts. Ira from New Jersey, $103. Jojo from Washington, $25. Lorena from uh, Hawaii, $101. Hilda from New York, 51. Lisa from Massachusetts, 100. April from California, 103. Karen from Pennsylvania, 25. And John from California, 25. Thank you, wow. all of you. And that's just um, Thank you. And actually, we forgot to make this announcement at the beginning. If you're watching this right now, right. please copy the link and post it on all your social. The more people yeah. are watching, the better. So yeah, so just copy on top, put on your Twitter and Facebook, right. take a 10 second break, do it. People need yeah. to see the listener are brilliant. Okay, so by the way, look, jo JoJo's actually here. I said, bless you for saying my name like that. Aww, <laughs> she said it right right right. There. Hi, JoJo, you're welcome. <laughs> So uh, I think we should bring on Dr. LaPoop. Melissa, do you mind standing by? And he, uh, I'm, I'm here. I have no right. people but to be I here. I to one thing. What, what else? Uh, what else? Uh? Christine Petty, my co-host, is blaming you for something. Uh -oh. I moved to Manchester in high school. I wanted her voice and her hair. My perm was all your fault. <laughs> your butt. Well, really dries this way. So I'm sorry, Christine, but I send you my love. It's called a Jufro. Okay, yes. let's bring on, bring on Dr. John LaPoop. Um, Again. John, you wanted this afternoon, right? Um, you talked about children. Am I correct? Right. I have yeah. We'll see you in a minute, Melissa. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll take you away. There you go, John. Hit it. So, you know, tonight, actually, on the CBS Evening News, we had Dr. Lisa Damore on. If people go on, it's D-A-M-O-U-R on. And we had, if you go to cbsnews.com backslash COVID-19, there are lots of really good tips about handling anxiety uh, and all of the emotional um, ramifications of this. But specifically with kids, you know, I reached out to uh, Dr. Harold Koplowitz uh, from the Child Mind Institute, and he's very uh, he's very expert on dealing with how do you deal with kids, how do you talk with kids, uh, what do they, you know, what do they need in these times? And you know, he talked about being predictable, being consistent, be responsive, be nurturing, uh, and also model calm reassurance. Remember, it's kind of like in an airplane ride, if it's bumpy, what is the first thing you do? You look at the flight attendant. What are they looking? Are they nervous? Then I'm, you know, so you want to sort of model that for them, um, which can be hard. And actually, one of my um, colleagues, Rena Dynan, Rena, Rena Ninen, sorry, um, she posted something. Her kids are on a couch. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, da, 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 da. And what yes. it is, is every morning my kids insist on pretending they're getting on the school bus before homeschooling starts. Aww. And, you know, it's them on the couch with a bunch of books. So it's, you know, keeping the routine. But, of course, the routine is not the same. They're not able to uh, play on their usual dates and all that stuff. But having a schedule for them throughout the day, having a routine. But people have been asking me, and actually in past crises and terrible school shootings that we've seen, um, a question is, what do you say to your kids? You know it's a better uh, way of looking at it? Listen. How do I listen to my kids? Listen and ask them, what are your questions? What questions do you have? And then try to calmly, empathically, mm -hmm. um, rationally explain to them. And you don't want to over-explain, you know? And it's so age-dependent. You may think you know what a five-year-old is thinking or an eight-year-old or even a three-year-old. So see what's on their mind and answer their questions and try to stay calm, put it in terms that they can understand. And I think I think that's so important to to be truthful with them, but don't give them more than they need to know. You know, um, it's a it's a real uh, instinct, isn't it? As a parent, I have two kids. Well, they're now 23 and 27. But when they're little, you know, 9-11 happened uh, when they were little. And your instinct is to say, oh, it, 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 it everything's going to be OK. But I remember my older son 
at the time was, let's see, nine years old. And he said, yeah, but you would have said that to me the day before it happened. You would have said that can't happen. So mm-hmm. they're thinking their wheels are going and the instinct to just say, oh, everything's going to be OK. It may work in, in certain age groups, but you want to be honest with them, but don't give them too much information. And again, you want to model that everything, you know, you why, why not bet on that everything is going to be OK? We all have to bet on that, right? You don't want to look back a year, three years from now and say, oh, my gosh, I should have just said, look, things are going to be OK, because I do believe that for everybody out there. I think we are going to be OK, but it's a bumpy ride. And how do you get your kids, your loved one, us through this? And guess what? You guys are helping by giving people a place to meet, at least virtually, right. uh, not physically. Well, on that note, stand by because Melissa, you're going to sing another song, and and we're going to do Q and A um, after Melissa sings. In the meantime, and someone asked, "How do you donate?" Go to ActorsFund.org, and um, yeah, so don't. I didn't even know there was a donate button on YouTube. Really, the easiest thing is ActorsFund.org, and then it's like slash stars in the house. But donate right there, and right. it's super simple. Okay, all right, Dr. John, we'll see you in a minute. Hey, peace right, out. Right. Um, so wait, I got to remove. Bye. <laughs> and then back to Ms. Manchester. Yes. Oh, you're getting a lot of requests. You know, you have a lot of fans out there yep. asking. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, of my requests. God. I love this song. My friend Andrea sang this. Through the Eyes of Grace, can we get any of that? <laughs> oh, my God. I, if I can remember some of it, I'll get to I'll, videotape some of it for Andrea. Yeah. Grace and John are in their morning places. He looks at the paper, she looks straight ahead. Neither one is hungry, but they need to be said. Yesterday the kids came by to see them, celebrating 30 years of holding on. Lift a loving cup for couple number one. Look across the table, Johnny. Look across the table to me. There's still a young girl in the old girl's face. Look across the table, honey. So the day begins through the eyes of grace. That's all of that I remember right now, but there is another one that, that uh, some oh, fans have so much. It's a beautiful song. Thank you very much. There's a, a song that I'll do a piece of that fans had asked me to uh, do as well. This is Home to Myself. I wake up and see the light of the day shining on me. Make my own time, it's mine to spend. Think to myself, my own best friend. It's not so bad all alone, coming home to myself again. Now, somehow I know I can come a long way. Got a long way to go, but something inside is making me strong. And in the bad times, I'll get along. Cause it's not so bad all alone, coming home to myself. I'm coming home. Just Why is it every song, hey, it's hey, all hey. Like, it gets your kishkas, as we say in uh, <laughs> Judaica. But speaking of Judaica, we never got this answer. Where did that go? Um, okay. Lynn wants to know, why the Christmas lights? You were starting oh. to explain when your sound cut out. Yeah, uh, they're they're ho- they're just holiday lights, and they're just you know I don't have a fireplace, and they're just lifting a little bit of the gloom, and they just bring a little bit of the cheer into the room. And I've decided to just I have them all over the place actually. They I love don't, it. Yeah, they just they're just 
lights. They're just pretty little lights. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves you. Your music's incredible. I love you. And Thank yes, you. I agree about this. Through the eyes of grace just broke me. Let the tears flow. Wait, uh, speaking of let the tears flow, um, what was, didn't you write a theme song to a TV show I'm obsessed with? Uh, Did you ever write a theme song to a TV show or am I crazy? I sang a, a theme song for Rosie, the trial of Rosie O'Neill. The, the one that Cheryl yeah. the show. That Cheryl King had written, yeah. It's I never so did record it, but yes, I did, yeah. Because by the way, you were a session singer when you first began. I was, that's how I met Barry Manilow and Patty Austin and Nikki and Valerie Simpson and Ashford and Ronnie Dante, all that we were all jingle singers, you know. Like, did you all know that? Like, becoming either staff writers or recording artists, that's how we learned how to think on our feet. It was amazing. What were some of the uh, uh, theme songs or commercials you sang? Do you remember any of them? You deserve a break today. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I was in the chorus of that. And oh my gosh, so many. Yeah, Camaro and Morton Salt. No salt, salt's like Morton Salt, salt. That was me. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it was it was incredible learning, and it was incredible energy because we were always doing something different. And uh, I did get a call to sing uh, uh, a solo on President Nixon, <laughs> Nixon's uh, campaign. I said, "Thank you, no." Yay! That's <laughs> we do a questions now, and then and, sure. and Q and A, and then sure. Melissa can do a final song. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna look. Any questions yes, for, now we can bring on Dr. LaPook in a second. Yeah, any questions for either Dr. LaPook and for Melissa? Everything so far is just incredibly sweet, by the way. Thank you uh, for lifting all of our spirits in such a difficult time. I'm a high school music teacher, and I always tell my students how musicians always rally and stick together when times are hard. Yes, Very that's kind. right. That's right. And the heart needs melody. The heart needs melody. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know anything. I don't know what this means. Stories about singing with your father. Well, my father was a bassoonist with the Metropolitan Opera, and he wow. played the original bassoon solo on "Coming from the Rain," and and he and he was also in my. I did the very second HBO special, and he was in the orchestra, and you can hear him and see him. And he was fantastic. He played at the Metropolitan Opera for thirty years. He was the second bassoonist, David Manchester. That's, that's a hard instrument. So, yes. from, so from the arts to medicine. So, Doctor LeBlanc, here's a question for you. The WHO advised today to avoid uh, NSAIDs, but the USA head medical chief said they are fine. How do we deal with the conflicting info? Yeah, you know, there's going to be a lot of conflicting info these days. And I, we've been looking at that also. Um, the reason for that was the theoretical thought that maybe um, if you're giving an anti-inflammatory, NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, so they're dec decreasing your body's ability to do inflammation. And so theoretically, would that somehow decrease your body's ability to fight a virus? But I can't find evidence in a study or in a published uh, journal that actually says that. This goes along with a lot of things that people are theorizing. But I think you know, right now we've got to stick to the data, what's known. I mean, if, you know, if, if it's no big deal, if you can have Tylenol or an NSAID, I mean, in general, we say go Tylenol just because it doesn't upset your stomach as often. You know, you can have some ulceration with the NSAIDs. Um, but I, I don't think there's proof of that yet. Um, and it brings up another point, which again, I think what, I, I know you're 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 all the entertainment and that it's great and I have to come in with the medical stuff. Um, but one thing that's very serious that I'm hearing, this is me from the trenches as my job as an internist. Um, I got a couple of requests today for, from people who said they've been reading that this drug or the other drug might be helpful and could I prescribe it for them just in case they're feeling fine? And I composed this carefully worded email, basically, which I'm now sending to anybody who says that, which is basically, look, I understand that instinct. It's a very natural human instinct. But right now is a time we have to think of ourselves as a community. And if you do, last thing you want is to be hoarding stuff and have it be in your cabinet unused when somebody in a hospital who's on the floor could, could need it. So sure. um, it's an instinct to do that. I understand it. But guess what? Selfishly or just thinking about yourselves, if you are able to treat that person in the hospital, it will trickle down to help the community and to help you because you don't get it. You know, doesn't spread it to somebody else, to a healthcare worker, could spread <laughs> it to somebody else. So the more we treat the people who really need it, the better off we're going to be. Um, we have to think uh, our, as a community now 
Right. And I think, um, you know, if there is a silver lining, you know, you know, I, my mother was always looking for the silver linings. Uh, and she was somebody who would think about the moment. Uh, she'd go to peel an orange and she'd say, at this moment, this orange has never seen the light of day. <laughs> wow. That's so sweet. Wow. That's so there, sweet. Now you would call it mindfulness. Back then it was just yeah. my mom peeling the orange. Yeah. But I think we need to be thinking about ourselves in the moment. What can we do for our community? Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath. We know it's a tough time. We are going to get through this again. Remember, 80% of the people who get sick, it's a relatively mild illness. We're going to get through it together. Melissa, thank you. Melissa, here's yeah. a question for you. What was your big break? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, my big break. Well, I, I think that that uh, Midnight Blue really shifted everything right. because we had recorded two albums prior to that, and they, they were successful uh, among college students, which was great, but to get national prominence with a with a single just it shifts everything really it's such a beautiful um, song all right um i actually have one more question someone just asked what is your favorite song that you ever wrote because we have all of our favorites but what's your favorite song i don't have a i don't really have well i have a tenderness for midnight blue because it was the first but i don't really have a a favorite but the, because they all mean something to me and because i was in the room when it happened it it you know it yeah. it, it designated a moment in my life so. All right, we got we got to close with a song, right? right. And okay. is Terry standing by here, um, or did Charlotte take him away? Yeah, I can't tell if he's standing by. Him. So, Melissa, what would you like to close with? Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, everybody. This has been such a joy and so important. Thank you, Seth. I can't hear Jeff. her. Um, yeah, I can hear her. Yeah, I can. Um, uh, I'm going to close with That's two. A shame of songs that I would like to dedicate to everybody who has had major disruption in their lives. Uh, I, my children have. My daughter was supposed to graduate with her MBA. My son was supposed to get married. It all has been postponed. So I know. So I'm going to sing portions of the following two songs and then I guess you just bid me adieu and all of us adieu whenever you wish. Okay. Oh. If you love the song, people, don't forget, she's doing this all for free for the Actors yeah. Fund. That's right. Donate to the Actors Fund. $5. I can't tell you how much it will help. Just had to say that. ActorsFund.org. ActorsFund.org. All right. So here we go. And it looks like sunny skies. Now that I know you're all right, time has left us older. Wiser, I know I am. Well, hello there, good old friend of mine. You've been reaching for yourself for such a long time. And I think of us like an old cliche, but it doesn't matter because I love you anyway. Now I know my life has given me more than memories Day by day We can see every moment there's a reason to carry on Carry on Sweet love showing us a heavenly light I never see such a beautiful sight See love glowing on us every night I know forever we'll keep doing it right. Whenever I go, new friend, I begin to think I understand. Anywhere at all, you're not meant to be together. Whatever. Think about the times to come, knowing I will be the lucky one. Ever our love will last. I always want to call you friend. We're all friends. Sweet love showing us a heavenly light. I never see such a beautiful sight. See love glowing on us every night. I know forever we'll keep doing it right. Whenever I call you Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. People are flipping out. 
<laughs> uh, okay, so in conclusion, well, we have that be we, back, we, by the way. Yes, and we and we lost Terry. You know, today was our. We were going to have a day like this where technical things. Technical were wasn't great, happen, but but the sound was great for you. The sound was great for you, and and we got more donations. This is just a sampling. So Yay. Daniel from Florida, twenty five dollars. Alex from Indiana, ten dollars. Awesome. Francis from Maryland, two hundred and fifty seven dollars. Tim from Kentucky, ten dollars. Oh, Jane from Pennsylvania, fifty. Sarah, Massachusetts, five dollars. That's what we're saying. Just five dollars is right. great. Elaine from Maryland, fifty one. Jack, $100 from California. Bonnie from Virginia, $100. And Abraham from California, $51. Thank you for coming everyone else so much. Thanks, everyone. So in Thank conclusion, you. so Dr. LaPook, of course, is back tomorrow. Both shows. He, he's a two-show day, vaudeville style. Yep. <laughs> Doing 8 p.m. We'll see you tomorrow for more updates. So bye, Dr. John. Bye. bye. Thanks. Bye, Dr. John. And then um, let's also say, so hold on. I'm going to uh, remember who's tomorrow. So tomorrow, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody one more time. Tomorrow we have in the afternoon, Anika Larson, who is about to star on Broadway. Well, it's not official, but it's going to be coming back to Broadway in Almost Famous. And we have the writer of that show, Tom Kitt, who wrote Next to Normal. He's going to let Anika premiere one of the songs from Almost Famous. It's, I'm assuming she sang it in San Diego. when they yeah. had, This is the first time she's done it like to a, like a mass audience online. And Tom said yes. Yeah, Tom said yes, which is incredible. Which so he'll is be here. amazing. And then tomorrow night we have Kayala Settle, the bearded lady from The Greatest Showman, who's going to be singing... This is me. Exactly. In full, she's going to wear a Christian Siriano Oscar gown. Like, so what she wore to the Oscars, she's not leaving her place. She is in her house, her own house, as if she were going to the Oscars. That is what we will be seeing and hearing tomorrow from uh, from uh, Kayla. In the meantime, I want to, uh, we have some people to thank. Did, did yes. you get Instagram? You tried to. Yeah, we, I, the, this won't link to Instagram. We're, we're trying, we're we're trying, but thank you to Samantha Starr for helping us with that. Oh my gosh, we got, did, are these more donations? Whoa, we got a ton of donations. Okay, I think we're, we're going to have tomorrow. to do them tomorrow. We got so many. Um, and and thank you, um, Eric Emch, for helping us with the graphic. We. We're not able to get it on today. We have a brand new graphic. We couldn't put it on screen, but it's a great Us graphic. going into New York, it really, it took up a lot more time, you know? Um, and so, but we got it together. We got on and uh, we thank Dr. John LaPook. And you want to bring him on? And yeah. Terry Mann, thank you for joining us. We'll bring you back. Thank you. And thank you, Melissa. And um, I think it's going to be time for our... And thank you, Susan Holder. <laughs> yes. I can't... Unmute Mike. This uh, is our regular ending, as we know. We bring on the dogs. So oh, bring on the dogs. Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> hi, hi everybody. Hi everybody. <laughs> Bye, okay, everyone. hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little three shot because I think Lapoo's gonna try to get a doggy here. Uh oh. Can we get oh, a dog? Uh oh, look at Mandy. Uh, Mandy, where'd you get that from? Uh oh. Mandy. That's hysterical. Oh my God! And there's Bagel. He's leaving. Okay. Oh boy! Oh, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye, everyone. Be Bye. safe. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Love you guys. Love you too. Bye. Thanks for all the help. You guys are amazing. Ah.